Hey, I'm Bob and I like to make stuff. Today I'm gonna make a solid walnut picture frame. Today we're gonna do a practical project because it's something that I need in my house. I've got this poster that I really, really like. Obviously it's Star Wars, so that makes it awesome, but also I just really like the artwork. Currently it's in a really cheap plastic frame and although it is the right size, it doesn't really fit. You can see the borders are wrong, it just looks cheap. So we're gonna use this as a base, but we're gonna make a custom frame specifically sized to the artwork. I'm also gonna take the plastic out of this and reuse it, but if you don't have one that you're already working from, you can get a thin piece of plexiglass at a home center and cut it down. I'm gonna use a piece of walnut for the frame because I think the dark wood will contrast the blue in the poster really nicely, but I've never actually made a big frame and so I'm not sure what details I wanna use. We're gonna do a couple of test cuts of different detail types to figure out which one looks best. Oh, and we're also gonna to try to do this entire thing on the table saw. First, we're gonna try out some different details. I've got two scraps of wood that we're gonna do this on. One, I'm gonna do a compound bevel. So we're gonna have two different bevels, just see how that turns out. On the other one, we're gonna try a cove cut on the table saw. That's something I've never done before and I'm actually a little nervous to do, but we're gonna try it anyway. For the bevel cut, I raised the blade up really high and then just slightly tilted it. This is really just experimentation. I didn't have a great idea of how it was gonna end up looking. After I made one shallow cut and then one really sharp cut, I took a look and it was okay. It wasn't great. So I did another pass with a little bit different angle and actually got a lot closer to what I wanted it to end up looking like. After that one, I started setting up to make the cove cut across the blade. I'm going to try this out and I've never tried it before and it feels kind of dangerous. So if you're interested in doing something like this, do it at your own risk. Basically what's going to happen is we're going to have the spinning blade like this and we're going to be pushing the piece of wood over it at an angle. Theoretically, it should carve out a cove in this piece as it passes over. But I gotta be honest, this feels totally unnatural to do, so just be careful. Usually people clamp down a board to the table saw, but I used my miter gauge and extended its reach by screwing on another piece of wood. I also clamped the end of that down so it wouldn't flex as I pushed over it. My first pass on this, I realized that the blade was way too high, so I backed it off a little bit and tried to work up to the height that I wanted. Right away I saw that this piece had a tendency to pop up and not go evenly across the blade, so I added a guide on the back side of it to stop it from being able to move up. I tried with a different piece next and it did work better, but it also made me realize that it actually needed to be supported on both sides of the blade. I got a much wider piece and ran it over the blade for the next test. This did work better, but I've learned since then that people actually make this piece captive between two fences, and that holds it right in the place that you want it to go. All you have to worry about is downward and forward pressure. I did a couple more passes to make the cove a little more pronounced, but before I cut it in half, I had to make sure to put the riving knife back in. This is a little safety device that goes behind the blade and it should always be there on a table saw. After I ripped this in half, I got to see what the coved frame would look like. Since my tests were finished, I moved on to my actual piece of walnut. This was milled down pretty well, but the first step was to get a nice clean edge. So I ran it through the table saw and trimmed off one outside edge that I could reference against the back fence of my crosscut sled. From here, I cut the pieces to length and then ran them through the table saw again to rip them to the right width. With all of the pieces cut down to their final dimensions, I marked where I wanted the insides and the outside of the pieces to be, and then started putting 45 degree marks on the end of each of them. This helped me figure out how to do the overlap of the pieces in the corners. I set the miter gauge to 45 degrees and then cut off some of the corners. Now not all of these pieces get cut off at 45 degrees. The joint I'm going to use here is called a miter half lap. From the top it looks like a normal 45 degree miter joint, but from the back you've got a half lap to add strength. So some of these pieces were cut at 45 degrees halfway through the depth of the wood and some were cut all the way through. You could use a dado stack to make this go faster, but I used a regular blade and just made lots of passes to chew away the section. I did this on one end of all the pieces before flipping the miter gauge around and doing all of the other ends. 
That finished up all the 45 degree cuts. The rest of them were cutting on pieces that were already mitered on the end. At this point I was using the crosscut sled, so I did have to raise the blade to account for that difference in height. I cut away half of the thickness on the rest of these corners so that they could fit into the previously cut pieces. I had actually never done this joint before, so I was a little nervous, but it turned out to be really, really nice. After I got one finished completely, I just did the same process to the rest of the ends. After all the cuts were finished, I used a wide chisel to flatten out where all the blade marks were. This was quick and easy, but made for a much tighter fit. After that, it was time for a test fit and I got to finally see how good this was going to look. Got the pieces fit together really well. I'm super happy with how they're joined up. The next step is going to be to add the detail. I tried the cove thing and it looked all right, but it just seemed overly complicated and I don't know, it didn't really do anything for me. So we're going to put an angle on this on each one of the pieces on the inside. On the original test piece, I did a compound bevel and it looked okay, but for these I decided to do one long cut and I think it turned out better. I was planning on putting a rabbit on the back side of this to inset the poster and the plexi from the back side. I was going to use the table saw for that, and you totally can, but since I have this type of half lap joint, you'd end up seeing it out here. Now you can drop it onto the blade and probably make that cut, but in this case I'm just going to use a router, so I'm not only going to be using the table saw, like I said, I will be using a router once I get this thing glued up. Gluing up these corners was really straightforward, but I did make sure to put glue on the horizontal and the vertical surfaces before clamping it up. This makes sure that everything will be really nice and tight. Oh, and I also used dark wood glue for this. It is a thing, and I'll have a link below. A really good thing about using the half lap here is that you can just clamp these pieces straight together top to bottom and don't have to worry about any crazy clamping techniques. Oddly enough, while we were filming this video, my buddy Kyle Toth, who's an amazing woodworker, released a video about how to make cove molding on the table saw. Since I don't really know what I'm doing and I didn't do a great job of it in this video, you should definitely go check out his video because he goes over a bunch of details that will show you how to do it the right way. And he gets awesome results. Kyle's amazing. Go check him out. Put a link to it down in the description. After the glue was dry on the frame, I flipped it over and clamped it down to the table so it wouldn't go anywhere. Then I put a big rabbiting bit in my trim router and went all the way around the inside edge. And of course the router leaves a rounded corner, so I squared those up with the chisel. After that I laid in my plexiglass and marked where I needed to cut it to make sure that it was a nice tight fit. Thin material like this slips underneath my table saw fence, so I did clamp on an edge just to keep it in place. And a table saw does cut, but it also kind of melts this plastic. So you end up with a rough edge, but you can usually just scrape off the melted plastic. I used an orbital sander with 220 grit to smooth off all of the surfaces and clean up where the half lap joints met up on the outside. I used a sanding block to knock off some of the corners just to make it a little bit smoother to the touch. Then it was time to add finish. I wiped the whole thing down with a tack cloth to remove any dust on the surface and then finished it with a mixture of beeswax and boiled linseed oil. This stuff really makes the color of the walnut pop out and it dries pretty quickly. After a little while I flipped it over and put in the plexiglass, then the artwork. There was a little bit of a gap around the artwork so I just put a small piece of tape up in the corner so that it didn't droop when I stood it upright. I also took the cardboard out of the existing frame and put it in place, using some nails to hold it there. Anytime you make a picture frame, there are a ton of different ways that you can hang it. There's tons of different types of hardware. And since I hate putting holes in the wall, I'm gonna use some temporary strips. These are like Velcro strips that you stick together. They stick on the back of the picture. And as long as you use enough of them, I'm gonna use four, they'll be plenty strong enough to hold this in place until we decide where we want it to go permanently. 
I'll have these linked down in the description in case you want to check them out, along with all the tools and materials that I used. There it is. I'm really happy with how it turned out. I wanted to do a simple project, but adding the joinery on the corners to this made it a little bit more complex and made it a lot of fun. Of course, there's a million variations you can do on a frame like this, different materials, different size, even different shapes. You don't have to use 90 degree angles. And then the decoration or the trim could be all sorts of things. You could even do inlays in different parts of it. And if you go to buy a frame like this at a store, it's gonna be really expensive. So you save a lot of money making stuff like this yourself. I'd love to know what you think about this one. Let me know down in the comments. I've got lots and lots of other projects that you may wanna check out of all different types. And don't forget to subscribe. That's it for this one, guys. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. There's tons of different picture hamming, 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 hamming. Yep, 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 yep. Of course, there's a million variations you can do on an, on a, what's not an angle, what's it called? A frame?